everyone. Welcome to our latest episode of Measure Matters. This is episode number four, and today we're talking about hearts, charts, and shopping carts. I'm Krista Seiden, analytics advocate at Google, and today we are joined by Lewis Gray, who is also analytics advocate at Google and my co-host, but he's joining us from London. So thank you so much for dialing in, Lewis. No problem. Thank you, Krista. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Looking at our agenda, we're going to, as always, review what we talked about last time on Measure Matters, what's new in analytics, our word on the street, and then finally, our big topic, which is hearts, sh hearts, charts, and shopping carts. It's a hard one to say. So previously on Measure Matters, we talked about Firebase and Google Analytics for Firebase, or mobile app analytics. Uh, we talked about a lot of the new stuff coming there, such as project level reporting and flexible filters, the new Crashlytics integrations. Uh, we walked through a great case study with DeepTown. We also talked about Spotify and how they're leveraging some of the new features with the optimized 360 and AdWords integration. And finally, we looked at some new Data Studio dashboard uh, metrics for Google Analytics. You can obviously watch that episode anytime on YouTube, and the, the link is right there. So what's new in product this week? So we have a few things for Data Studio. The first is reverse axes in Cartesian charts in Data Studio. So what is this? Well, you can now control the display direction of the X and Y axes in several different types of charts. Um, you can find this in the styles property under axes and then use the checkbox you see on the screen to be able to change the order of how those are gonna display. On the right hand side, you just see a quick little demo we mocked up so that you can see what this actually looks like when you do change the direction of these axes. Next, we have community connector source parameterization. Uh, now that is a word, parameterization. <laughs> um, so what is this? Our third party connectors now support passing parameters from reports to our data source. A couple things to know if you're gonna go ahead and use this. It's limited to community co connectors only. And once you've actually created a data source, any changes that you make to the parameters won't automatically work. You're gonna to have to reconnect that data source to be able to get these changed parameters in there. So to put it in context, let's talk about an example with zip code. So let's say you have a dashboard that you've created that looks at a lot of different uh, information such as weather and uh, location information for a particular zip code. Now, previously, if you wanted to look at more than one zip code, you would have had to create more than one dashboard and connect to more than one data source. But now you can make that zip code your source parameter and then be able to change out the zip code in this report anytime just by clicking a drop down or however you set it up to use a new, uh, a new zip code in this setup. So very, very useful to be able to explain, expand the data that you wanna report on within a single dashboard. Finally, we have thumbnails and default aggregation in Data Studio. So thumbnails, what is it? You can now generate thumbnail images for your reports by adding slash thumbnail to the end of any URL where you're gonna share this. So for example, if you wanna tweet out a really cool new dashboard that you made, you can add slash thumbnail to the end of that URL and right within your tweet, it's gonna be able to embed that thumbnail for you to see and show off your really cool new dashboard. Also, a few other things to highlight here. We have some new metric icons uh, for aggregation types and new example reports in our help center. So a lot of new stuff coming on the Data Studio front. What else do we have? Well, we have some stuff with Google Analytics for Firebase. Now, if you watched our previous episode on Google Analytics for Firebase, you would have heard some of these things, but since we haven't called it out here in our what's new in product section, I wanted to make sure we highlighted this for anybody who might have missed it there. So the first is project level reporting in Google Analytics for Firebase. And this is a really cool one. It's actually a fundamental change to how this product works. You used to have to choose which OS version, either iOS or Android, that you wanted to analyze within your reports. Now, both OS versions are gonna roll up into a single project, and then you can add, we're gonna talk about in the next slide, uh, a filter to be able to separate out the different OS versions if you want. But this is great because we can now get all of our aggregated data together without having to go into multiple tabs or multiple different views of this to understand how your business is holistically doing. This is live in our demo project right now. So you can actually go to the Firebase demo project, uh, which is flood it and play with this. And it's rolling out over the coming weeks to everybody. So the next, I kind of alluded to it, uh, during the last one is flexible filters in Google Analytics for Firebase. So 
This is really cool because it adds much more segmentation ability to Google Analytics for Firebase. So you can now actually segment between your streams. So stream is iOS or Android, but you can also add additional parameters to that filter. So you can choose a device model, for example, and you can look at a stream of iOS plus a device of iPhone 8 or 8 plus. So as you can see, you can stack these together and really get much more granular on that analysis. This is also live in the demo account now, so you should definitely check it out, go play with it, um, and you'll see it rolling out in your Google Analytics for Firebase accounts soon. So next we have Word on the Street. I'm gonna pass it over to Lewis for this one. Thank you, Krista. That's actually a lot of updates on the product side, and you got to handle all the big words before I get to go through the easy <laughs> slides. So the first thing, I'm over here in the UK, in England, and England is having an amazing run in the World Cup. And we have just been watching way too much soccer or football, as they say over here. Now, one of the things that we really enjoyed about it is taking a look at the data and seeing exactly what teams are favored and what the specifics are behind each team using this data studio dashboard from Data Runs Deep. They have a really cool interactive guide that you can go through and take a look at any team, any matchup, take a look at any group standings to see who's coming to go on to the round of 16 and beyond. And even a cool page where they compare the GDP of the country to the assessed value of each team. And so if you want to understand exactly what that's all about, uh, go ahead and check that link. But we've been really excited to see that flowing through social as people share it out and, and find out more about the World Cup. Let's go to the next one, Krista. This one is near and dear to both of us, and that's the Women in Analytics community. Uh, the Digital Analytics Association has a Women in Analytics community. It's open. It's open for anyone to support gender equality. Uh, this is something we talk about a lot in our streams because it's really important for us to understand that this is an open community and an open industry to try and really uh, spur on high quality women who do excellent work with data. And so this is really something we want to push again and again and let people know that this is open and you should be checking it Absolutely. out. So let's go to the next one. So Rand Fishkin, we all know him from Moz. Uh, he had a really fun deep dive whiteboard that he put together last week, which talked about what kind of metrics matter. And we talk about measure matters on this show. It's the name of the show. But sometimes people get caught up and say, well, that's a low quality metric or that's a high quality metric. For example, bounce rate or pages per visit. Like, should we ignore this data? We collect it, but where does it have value? And one thing that he talked about is making sure that if you're collecting some piece of data, like a bounce rate, or pages per view or per visit, that they're actually funneling toward conversion and that you understand there's a real value to collecting the data, not just because you can, but because you should. Uh, so you definitely want to check that out. I always appreciate his insight. And this one was a lot of fun. Yeah, one, one quick so clarification there. Rand Fishkin, yeah. formerly of Moz, now of SparkToro. <laughs> no, that's correct. Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on. You get used to somebody being somewhere. I know, right? All right. So let's go to the big topic of the day. And I know, Krista, you mentioned the title earlier with hearts, charts, and shopping carts. The reason I bring this up, I've been in marketing for a long time, uh, probably a couple decades now in Silicon Valley. And we've always seen this kind of push pull between this gut feeling of emotion. You know, here's what we think is going to work. The customers seem happy. And then we've all kind of adopted charts. You know, as you go with that slide, we've all kind of gotten to this analytic phase, you know, all right, now we're able to count that information and we've graduated to the second step of charts. Mm -hmm. But we know that if we do this correctly, that you need a mix. You need a mix of hearts, which is emotion, charts with its data and carts, which is revenue. And this is an easy way to remember as you go through and you graduate from hearts to charts to shopping carts. We'll talk a little bit about that data. And so one thing I've enjoyed with uh, Krista working on Measure Matters is we go deep into some very specific things, whether that be Firebase or that be mobile, uh, we can find a lot about our product. But I want to take a step back and talk about why we measure in the first place. So let's go to the next slide. So in the old days, we knew we were spending money, and that's just about all we knew. We didn't know what type of advertising worked. We didn't know what type of money was being wasted. And there's a famous quote by John Wanamaker, who was actually the U.S. Postmaster General at one point and it adds a marketing pioneer. He said, I don't know which half is being wasted. With the ability to track, you should be able to know which is wasted. So let's move to the next slide and talk about more efficient analysis. Next slide. You really have a number of options for tracking data. And if you're listening to the show, watching the show, we know you're not at step number one, but there are so many people who just don't track anything at all, or their tracking is broken. They don't know what to do with it. You could track everything and not know what's important, which goes back to Rand's post or you could track everything and report on those which are important. We want to help you graduate from step three to step four. 
And that's where Google Analytics comes into play. This really is a maturity, uh, a maturity curve, right, Lewis? I've been in businesses, I've come Absolutely. into organizations where people are tracking nothing or they think they're tracking everything, but it's actually broken. And we need to go in and reevaluate right. what, really, uh, what we're really caring about as a business. And while I think it's aspirational to track everything, you do need to narrow it down to what your key performance indicators and what those things that are really gonna move the business are to focus your efforts uh, and really move things forward. Absolutely. And I gave a presentation to Haas Business School at Berkeley a little while ago. And one of the questions was, why do we even need Google Analytics Advocates? Doesn't everybody know about analytics? But it's not just knowing about it. It's about using it correctly and bringing real value. So let's go to that next slide and talk about how to measure. One of the things we always talk about here on this team, and, and for Krista, this probably sounds like a broken record, but you have to begin with a plan. And when you have that measurement plan, you have to know what the objectives are. What are we doing with this campaign? What is it that's important? Does it align with our business strategy? As we do this, who actually benefits from it? Who's going to measure us? You know, how do we know that this worked? And we want to categorize our channels so we can measure properly and set those KPIs that make sense for us. And so this is something that's really important. And as we move to the next slide, you know, when in the campaign process do we think about measurement? The sad story is about half of people don't actually think about the measurement until it's already started. And the reality is to do this correctly, you have to plan on measurement from step one. Is this a revenue campaign? Is this a leads campaign? Is this a clicks campaign? Is this a brand awareness campaign? For example, you have to know what it is you're trying to do. And as you look at this chart, there's a scary 16% of people who just don't measure it at all. I know that's not you. So the question is, are we measuring those interactions that matter? How do we know what those key insights are in the data? So we're not just looking at raw numbers, but seeing insights. And how do we turn those insights into results that we can take action on? Next slide. As you know, there's a number of different channels that you can measure. And we talk about this a lot with, with analytics. If you're familiar with the interface, you can click through and find out specific details around display, social, email, you know, price per click, all these different pieces and find out exactly what brings value. And so let's go to the next slide and say, when you're collecting that data, how do you have this operation procedure of reporting? And this is going to really key into a lot of things that we talk about regularly on the show, including Data Studio. But what kind of data do you need? What format do you need it in? When do you need it? Is this a one-time or recurring request? And I think when we give conversations to folks, we often talk about that ability to export to a CSV and attach it via email and send it to your boss. And that used to be the way we would do things with a one-time request or even a weekly request. But as we've evolved, we have new products that make this even easier. Let's go to the next slide. So what about this data? You know, the data has to answer that important question. So it's not just a number, but it's a story. Who are those customers? Where did they come from? What did they do on the site and how do they convert? And if that sounds familiar, well, that's exactly what Google Analytics was built to do. So let's go to the next slide and let that build out. So enterprises need to make a shift from being data centric to being change centric. It's one thing just to have the numbers and decide that, you know, we're about to move these KPIs from one to two or two to three, but understand what does the data mean for us as a business? If we have an objective to grow our revenue, what are the specific changes that we need to make to our website our campaign strategy or our app to have direct impact. And I think Krista, we had an excellent example last week, or sorry, in the last episode, when we talked about a business literally changing the game where they were able to make a change that brought more revenue in and made them profitable where they weren't otherwise. Absolutely, and that was a change that was driven by the data that was surfaced to them through predictions in Firebase. And that information actually led them down the path of testing something that wasn't necessarily intuitive. They didn't necessarily think that they would do, but it ended up leading to a great change for the bottom line of the business. Absolutely. And that, you know, I'm glad you moved this along. You know, this goes to a real key point is that getting these small analytics victories, like understanding what campaign works better in an A-B test might not be enough to be a dramatic change for you as a business. You have to connect analytics all the way through your entire process. And I'm looking at this slide. I wonder why the icons are not very uh, diverse, Krista. We'll have to change that next time. <laughs> but it needs to be able to pull all the way through and understand how do you improve marketing, how do you improve sales and product uh, so it can have a big impact all the way through. So let's go to that next slide. You should know this already. This is Google Analytics. And our four main reporting areas tell you exactly what we were speaking of before. 
Who are those customers? That's your audience. Where did they come from? Acquisition. What do they do? The behavior? And how do they convert? And what are those conversions? And so those four pieces are designed explicitly to aid your process as you go from a data-focused company to a change-focused company. Let's go to that next slide. For those who are just new to analytics, uh, they might understand, well, well, what are my numbers? What do they look like? The idea is to have a baseline. You know, Once you put that JavaScript code in and it starts to track the visitors to your site and what they're doing, you can have something to compare it to. If you don't have that baseline to compare it to, then how do you know if you're doing very well? Next slide. And as you know, when you get into GA, you're able to dig deeper into different locations, platforms, demographics, understand the very specific things about your visitors and what makes them different. And obviously the cart portion of this story, how do they come in through referral traffic and be able to actually identify the revenue share with e-commerce tra uh, tracking. And one thing I like is our demo account, Krista, where it talks about the Google merchandise store and you can see real revenue from a real company doing business uh, with GA. Absolutely. And so we wanna be able to get you, you know, take you from that initial piece of emotion and kind of having a gut feel to dragging you through those charts using data to changing your business, which is all about the shopping carts, assuming that you're a revenue focused company. And so let's take a next step. We've talked a lot about mobile previously on a number of our different Measure Matters episodes, but it bears repeating. Mobile has changed everything. There are trillions of searches made globally on Google every year. Trillions is a lot. Even when you look at billions of people in, in the world and you start to do that math, that's a lot of searches. And these searches are changing. You know, these are searches that aren't always on web. They're often on mobile. More than half are on mobile. And these mobile queries, as you let that build out, are usually around four specific pieces. And they're actions. And we call these micro moments. It's, I want to know something. I want to go somewhere. I want to do something. I want to buy something. Even my kids, I bring them up a lot because I have to interact with them a lot. They do these exact same things. They wanna know what the weather's going to be. They wanna know how long it will take to get somewhere. They wanna understand how to change something. And obviously they wanna buy things so long as I uh, let them do that. But everybody wants to use these queries. They can do them uh, via voice or mobile, but mobile is really the first place. Let's go to that next slide. So how often are we interacting with mobile devices? We've done studies that show about 150 times a day is when people use their mobile phones. And when I talk to folks about this, usually they're touching their phone right now, right? People are always on their phones. Nobody leaves their phone at home or has, you know, the phones in the car, or the phones in the office. They have it with them connected constantly. And so it becomes often the first thing you do when you wake up. Often people reach their phones, which might be the alarm, and pick it up and read email and answer Twitter and answer all these hangout notes uh, directly from bed. Then they'll get up and go for a jog and they're using their phone constantly. And at each point throughout that day, they're taking these micro moments and you look at it and say, was an action taken at 2 p.m. the result of something that happened at 1.59 or the result of something that happened at 10 a.m.? When did this action take place that influenced the sale? So let's look at that next slide. When you take an action, what touch point makes the impact? One thing I often hear about historical analytics platforms is they were very heavy on the last click. Or in things like salesforce.com, maybe eight, 10 years ago, we focused a lot on the first click or that first transaction, which gave you a lead source. And now we see we're very much data driven where we can specifically go and understand that X percentage of the value came from that first interaction and another percentage came from a second interaction and then another percentage from that final interaction. And that's called attribution, where you can attribute a specific amount of value to each step through that customer funnel. And it can be tempting to give a full value of that conversion to the last click, but it doesn't make sense. This is a user journey, not a single point of activity. Let's go to that next slide. One thing that we understand is that marketers know they have to do a better job at attribution, but most of them aren't doing it. Almost nine out of 10 people surveyed found that they don't believe their data sources are well integrated. And so often we'll find that we're tracking email in one place, we're tracking Salesforce content in one place, we're tracking Google Analytics data in one place, web content. And there are these diverse pieces of data which are not well integrated. And the smart people are finding a way to get those all together from one dashboard so they can take an action. So let's go to that next slide. One of these things we talked about was this graduation of data 
to change. And what that means, like Fran was saying, is that you graduate the pieces of data that you're tracking and get full visibility into consumer behavior. Because what new marketers need is fast and complete data sets to know what's happening against all the customer touch points, all the channels, and all the devices to get the full context of the journey. So when Chris and I are talking about measure matters, we're not talking about just number of sessions or number of hits or devices. We're talking about users and journeys and their full flow. We want to give you more insight into what's happening, not just more data, and help you collaborate together to make smarter decisions whenever you need it. So let's go to that next slide. One piece I always get asked is what's happening next? What's coming next for analytics? And uh, Krista, we went deep on this with machine learning. So I know this is a little bit of a repeat for those of you who watch Measure Matters regularly. But let's remind ourselves, we want to get to the point where you can talk directly to your analytics and ask direct natural language queries and get the answer you want right away. Next slide. So what if that answer was as easy as getting a question in plain English and just say, how many new users did we get? from organic search on mobile last week and get that answer right away. We now have that option, next slide, both on Android, iOS, and the web. We would prefer that the machines do all the work and you get the credit. Why should you have to look into these numbers and try and find out exactly what's going on when the machines will find out what's different and bring it directly to you? And this is something that we're working on a lot right now, is to make sure that you can get that answers right away and make a big difference. So you're not just using analytics, but using smart analytics and getting it quickly. Anything to add on machine learning, Krista? Uh, just that you should definitely watch episode one because we really dove into this deep. But I do think that this is the future of how we are thinking about reporting in analytics. We want to be able to surface a lot of those insights directly to you and let you spend your time on actually analyzing those insights and using them to improve your businesses rather than having to sift through the data to find anomalies or, or various changes that might actually have impact. Absolutely. And, and one thing I like about this, you know, this kind of overarching story of hard charge and shopping carts is we can go real deep. This could be a long discussion, three hours plus, uh, but who's got time for that? We want to do, let's go to the next piece and talk about visually appealing dashboards. Uh, we do talk about Data Studio a lot uh, on this show because it's important and uh, people are getting a lot of value out of it. What we want to do with Data Studio is let your team make better decisions and improve performance. And we talk often about different integrations as we bring new data sources into Data Studio. But we want you to be able to publish one time to a, a visually appealing data source where you can look at this report, share it with your teammates, and have them get the data that they want right away. Let's look at that next slide. So this is the workflow of Data Studio. You bring the data in, you look at it, you analyze it, and then you report it. And we wanna be able to pull that all the way through to the point that you can share the right information to the right people. And so if we were doing this show three years ago, we might not be talking about Data Studio, but I'm very happy that we get to now because what we're trying to do is build new tools that make marketers better and make analysts better. So they can take a story from their data and share it with the right folks. No, I think this message is really uh, resonating yeah. too with our with our users. I've been out in market a lot recently and I've heard so many stories of users who are actually using Data Studio to make their lives, make their jobs better. Um, even at the Digital Analytics Association Quanti's Awards uh, a few weeks back, the winner of the top practitioner told a story about how at his business he was the lone analyst um, and yet he had hundreds of different stakeholders who all needed reporting on how their television shows were doing. And so what he did was he went ahead and created a Data Studio dashboard template and then applied it to a bunch of different data sets and shared it to all of these different stakeholders. And Data Studio was what really allowed him to be able to excel at his job. So I think it's really cool to start to hear how this product that you know, we've worked on really hard as a organization over the last couple of years is actually really coming to fruition and helping analysts do their job better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, obviously it seems a little internal, but I spoke to a guy today uh, on developer relations in the UK who loves Data Studio, who's just gushing about it. Uh, and it's really fun for me to go out in the market, as you say, and hear people who thank us for building Data Studio. Uh, they really appreciate this product. So let's talk about another piece of our, our suite, and that's surveys. Uh, when I talk about surveys, this is really interesting to me because I've been someone who has been in the publishing world, created content, uh, both as a reporter and as an independent blogger. And we worry sometimes about the world of journalism. You know, as revenue uh, markets change, 
you know, newspaper uh, subscriptions are going down. So what can we do to bring value to those new endpoints and, and find a way that brings value to everyone who wants to read that content? And so we've brought Google surveys to the market. It's an online research platform that lets people survey a representative sample of the target population across the web and on mobile. And there's really two pieces to it, uh, one of which is that surveys on the web. Uh, I often talk about having a survey wall, like if you're going to read something from a specific publication that you find especially vital to get to, but you're not going to revisit the publication regularly, instead of being asked to subscribe to get to that wall, you can go ahead and answer a quick Google survey uh, and they'll show you the full article. So let's show that next slide. So the way that this works is we have hundreds of publishers who host surveys on their site in exchange for payment. So in sense, it's advertising. And so we have tens of millions of unique users each week that use that publisher network and get access to premium content that otherwise they'd have to set up an entire payment structure to handle. And it has inferred age and gender as well as location and income to bring value to that publisher. Next slide. We also have an Android product. It's also on iOS now as well. Uh, that is basically called Opinion Rewards. And so the Opinion Rewards app will ask you questions about your activities and interactions with businesses so that we can better understand what kind of foot traffic they have when they leave the internet and go into the real world. And so with these two pieces together, as we continue to survey users both on the web and in the real world, we can give direct access and information to merchants that they find especially valuable. And we simply give people Google Play credit that they can go ahead and buy more tokens in whatever game that we're talking about or any apps that are premium. So let's look at that last slide. This is how you see those results. If you are a Google Surveys customer, you can analyze your results quickly with good accuracy and download the raw data. So you can crunch it as however you want or even put it into Data Studio, which is what I would do, and analyze those results, filter the demographics, and get a good transparency of a sample network and weighting. And so we had, uh, I like to study, you take a look at 538.com, uh, which is Nate Silver's product that really talks about data analysis and predictions. And he's always been exceptionally bullish on our Google surveys data. And that's because we report on the structure and how it works. I'm very happy to see that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go to the next bit. One, uh, right. one quick thing to add on, on Google surveys. So this is one of my favorite products for all the reasons that you've just mentioned. But another one that we don't talk about all that op often, um, but a really great use of this product is for site satisfaction surveys or website satisfaction surveys. So I like to launch a Google survey on every test variant that I'm running. For example, if I'm running an A-B test looking at a new website redesign versus my old website, I wanna know what the qualitative feedback from users is gonna be for that same experience, not just the quantitative data of what they're clicking on on that site, because it's gonna add a whole nother level of interpretability and information about how well that new site is performing. So it's a great use of this tool as well. And just one last thing is you can actually implement this through Google Tag Manager. There's a Google Surveys tag in there. It makes it super simple to be able to launch a survey very quickly to your users. And that's what's cool about these products is you can launch them out in the world and you never know how people are going to use them. And so I like the fact that you've seen it and you found a real good value for that that I hadn't thought of. So I appreciate hearing that. And so let's talk about making these users smarter. Now, this is something we talk about. We should mention it every single time and that's our academy. Uh, Krista, you, you star in a number of these, but we wanna focus on the fact that if some of this sounds challenging or if we use a lot of words that don't make sense to you or you wanna get better uh, at your campaigns and your measurement strategy, we have a number of courses online, which are free. We have the beginner's course, uh, we have advanced Google Analytics, we have a focus on GA360, which is our latest one, a focus on e-commerce, again, shopping carts, and Google Tag Manager Fundamentals. And so if you want to level up and be one of those analytics-based marketers that brings real change to your business, this is a great place to start. And I'm happy that we do this. Uh, I've seen this get passed around every once in a while. It bubbles up on Twitter and people get really excited. So you can get this right now and get certified. So next slide. When it comes down to hearts, charts, and shopping carts, it's not just three words that rhyme that's easy to remember, but to know the facts and figures that make sense for your business. Measure everything, report on what's impactful to your business and use those business objectives to show real revenue. One of the best stories I have as a marketer was when we were able to go into the CFO's office and talk about the campaign successes that we had. And he suggested that we could get more budget to bring him more revenue. And that's a conversation that's a lot easier to have than trying to explain your way out of why you lost money on something. 
And so as you're continuing to track, it can change the way that you're perceived. It can get you that promotion you've been looking for. It can bring you the revenue that makes sense for your business. So always use the data and use it correctly. And that brings us to the end of the show, Krista. So we talk about this regularly with our summary. And you know, if you want to connect with Measure Matters, Krista and I are always listening. If you send a note out to the hashtag Measure Matters, be that on Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook, I'm sure we'll find it. Uh, follow us on Google Analytics just about anywhere. And Krista Seida and Lewis Gray on Twitter are easy to find. And we are going to be talking about Measure Matters Episode 5 on July 18th with a recap of Google Marketing Live and some new product features that I'm really excited about. Absolutely. So Krista, back to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, especially Lewis, for joining us from abroad. And I hope you guys uh, really got a good understanding of how you can use all of these different things that we've talked about to really drive value for your businesses. So thank you very much for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time.